Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. As we move from area to area at this point with new areas being visited, speaking to each individual in our case because man there's a ton of them now. Investigation day one, court day one, basically they just gave us a ton of evidence and now we're meeting a ton of people as well so it feels like this is a majorly at investigation heavy case. Let's put it that way as we move on to one of the areas we haven't been to yet. The Criminal Affairs Department. Let's get moving. It seems like the, the trial wasn't that great, if you know what I mean. It's all about the investigation. The people are meeting. The main server just went up in smoke! Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already. Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet too. I already told you to stop using your computer, chief! But I'm watching videos online! I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas. It's gonna have to wait, chief. I'm throwing the switch! No! Just when some young guy was about to confess to his son's hot to trot girlfriend! Wow, this place is really buzzing! Something must be going down. Something really big. Huh! What are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe! You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? We've got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus! A virus! A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. I really need to ask you some questions. Right, well, what's this virus? Tell me. It's a bit random. Well, no, don't. We'll just talk completely about something that's not the virus. Okay, I'm only going to say this once, so listen up. Y yes? No matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, yeah? Um, okay. If you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. Uh, we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well, let's see. Tender lender is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. Loan shark, see? I knew. My terminology is good, and it seems it ran into trouble just recently. Oh, these guys have been pretty heavy-handed, calling in all their adepts. I'll just confirm that into one word, calling in all their adepts. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. All right, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute. You know more about that lady? What did you just say? That lady? Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? We'd better find out what the story is with this lady. Well, if that's what you're hinting me to do, then I will present her profile. Tell me more. That's the girl who works over at Tender Lender. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name's Viola Cadaverini. She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadaverini. Bruto Cadaverini? Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Bruto Cadaverini's the boss of the Cadaverini family. Who'd have guessed? The Cadaverinis? That's one scary sounding name. We can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? N no, I don't remember ever saying I was going to. I bet he gets some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. Indeed. Right, that that's a really good vein. But we need to also know about the computer virus. Maybe. Oh, let's follow this vein. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop. These guys are scary. They've got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. We can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. Moolah? As in... They pretty much control all the cash in the city's black market. The black market, huh? And that includes Tender Lender, I take it. Sure, no one stands out to Bruno Cadaverini, and I mean no one. Interesting. So Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss then? Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruno loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So, how did she end up at Tenderlender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tenderlender are pretty tight. Tight? That's what it said in the file I read related to Maggie's case. That's like a pretty important clue. Right, do you want me to present the other half as well? Oh, this guy, the tiger. 
Is he famous? Yeah, this guy's not a loan shark, you know. Nope, he's a big lone cat. Hence the name. Don't pay him back. And you better say your prayers. Because he'll eat you alive. Oh, really? Who's shaking, detective? Like a leaf. I'm just, you know, kind of on edge at the moment. If you know what I mean. Probably. A little bit. Well, didn't bring up any more conversation stuff, but we learnt some more. Now, what about this virus? So what exactly is a computer virus, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know. <laughs> what? Just, I don't know. Oops. Look, I just go with the flow, all right, pal? And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm going to call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine. I'm no expert, but I can at least explain the basics to the two of you. Okay, I'm going to explain what's a virus. A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is, um, well, it's all internal. So the inside goes boom, right? Imagine all the case data you've got stored on your PCs here in the station. A virus could wipe out all of that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa, that's scary! Yeah, and what's even more scary is that viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network. So the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Hmm, just like a real virus, huh? But Nick! Why would anyone want me to make a program like that? Want me to make one? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would I want to destroy it, pal? No, people don't infect their own machines. They send the virus to someone else. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you're sneezing on Mr. Godot so he catches a cold. Right. Then you wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who? What? Where? When? And why did the conversation jump to talking about me? Anyway, that's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses of names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard of it before too. Don't play it as music. I think we've figured out that it's not a music contract at all, is it? Computer viruses, computer programs. How am I going to present this? As the disc, maybe? Detective Gumshoe, um, about this. What? I'm trying to concentrate on Maggie and this virus right now, so I... Ah! This is it! This stupid name! I remember now. I thought so. Here it comes. Don't just nod yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? It's okay, May. You don't have to cry about it. The name scribbled on that sports paper and written on that CD. That's the name of the virus. MC Bomber. What? Yeah, the virus has just infected every computer in the station, pal. It's MC Bomber. Can you give us any more details, please? Okay, more details on MC Bomber. It's a computer virus. We already knew about the MC Bomber virus from a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? I don't know. Some hotshots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah. It's in every computer in every public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts. They're hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. All this stuff with criminals and viruses. It almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Apparently, the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. The focus right now is on tracing the root of this virus on the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah, because this one's so powerful. They're estimating his price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. Way worth more than a lottery ticket. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? Well, our computer programming place has got something to answer for, isn't it? Ah! I can't believe it! I almost forgot the most important thing! And that is? You know, the lunchbox! How did everything go? The lunchbox? Do you remember the weenies? We ate them. I hate weenies! Oh yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste when they went down the hatch? Uh, um, well, it was delicious. 
Yeah, that's what she said. Really? Um, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh. Do me a favor again, help out and deliver this. This sure is a heavy burden. In more ways than one. I can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. Weenies again, Nick? Tell me we'd have to eat all these too. Okay. Gumshoe's lunchbox given to Mayor. Again. I really can't eat it anymore. Right, has she actually ate them? Or have we actually got to deliver them? No, we actually have them. Well, okay then. We've got four conversation options from you. I guess we can give it another go. Ah. Well played. Right, so where are we moving to next? Well, back to Trebian, maybe? No one's here exactly, to be honest. Now that we know that MC Bomber is, it sounds like some kind of cyclop there might be working in our favour. Should we go there first, or should we check the kitchen? I'm not examining, I'm moving! Don't you understand? Hello, Mr. Kudo. Excuse me, we're going to... Not Trebian. Wait, what? Because I can move straight there, isn't it? Whoops, not to Vitamin Square. Somewhere else. Right, so we're looking to maybe try to. Yeah. Should we present the virus to her and see what happens? Maybe she catches it. Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry, that data is super admin. Oh, yeah, okay, whatever then. Do you not realize what it is? This is Sparta, I know. We're trying again. No, it's fine. It's fine. I made a mistake. We did ask about Glen Elk. But now it's time for us to present the Magatama and maybe give that a go. Take that. A bit of a risk. One would say. Free Cyclox. Glen's troubles. Gambling. So how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elk was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What are you talking about? I guess I'd better just take a shot and see where it gets me. Miss Basil. 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 Let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elk's troubles have something to do with this? Gambalizing? Most likely. Take that! Well, what do you think? I'm not sure. Let's ask one of the programmers. Excuse me, can you answer this man's query, please? The data queue that manages system tasks for troubleshooting requires that the multitasking simulation for local variables be put in sleep mode so the data transmission on active nodes can be bundled correctly according to the source code, obviously. No then. So I'm afraid that's the situation, you see. Did you get full people follow that? Not even slightly. What was all that mumbo jumbo? Exactly as my programmer explained. I'm guessing I picked the wrong piece of evidence there. Yeah, well, it's the same question is fine. It's like... Loan stuff, isn't it? It's debt. Um, was there something more pertinent? It's not that. It's not that. I mean, it's... Uh, it's the gambling. Why am I not getting this right? It's definitely the gambling. Maybe I present the MC Bomber thing. Take that! Oh, that worked. But both of the gambling. Horse racing, horse racing tickets. Come on, game. What is that? A bunch of horse racing tickets. My presenter! All losing ones. For that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling center. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortunes is immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? What is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glen Elg. He had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. Yeah, but not everyone buys as many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Elg's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? Lottery ticket. Take that! 
A lottery. Horse racing. He bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. That's got to have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Oh, she's melting! D like, down her pulsing bits. Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps. No! You are right. Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example, do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars. Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? It's true that Mr. Elk won half a million dollars, in the end. But that was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elk's real problem was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. It was a tiger. Do I present the profile here? Take that! Furio Tigre, the boss of a loan office called Tenderlender. Tenderlender? People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Like you want to talk! Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, 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 no! I mean about Mr. Elg! You think Glenn had something to do with this Fury of Tigre? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know of any connection between the two of them. Really? Because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tiger knew each other. The meeting? Right, um... Well, yes, the meeting. Is it the sports paper? It's not John's load contract. Wait, am I missing a bit? Uh-oh. I got proof they knew each other? How? Oh, wait a second, maybe that. Aha! Take that! No, that's wrong! Well, what do you think? I'm not sure, that's, that's, that's wrong as well! I mean, that's really the link there. But it's because the loan. But the loan bill is... Oh my goodness, this is the meeting with the tiger. It's the first bit. You're serious. I'm losing loads of HP. If you're a Tigre, aka the tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. I'm going like so close, but not so far. I mean, it was found there, etc, etc. Ah, oh, whatever. This is who Mr. Elk met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk with him about would be his debt. No! It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000? Ouch! But I heard he won the lottery, so we should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Okay. So the guy got lucky and won the lottery. What if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but he said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I expect he was talking about programming. Well, what computer program is worth $100,000? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question, was it by any chance, MC Bomber? Take that! Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber! We ain't got no life. No! Ah, Molten Core. And we got all our health back! By being quite close, but not close enough. Glenn's troubles! We can finally find out more. Glenn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with the gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, $100,000 in debt, not an easy amount to repay. So, he said he was taking on some extra work, something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Trebian. Where'd you come up with these ideas? Right, risky extra work. Virus making, of course. So it's safe to say Mr. Elk was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus? Yes. It was a work of genius, in a bad sort of way, of course. But still genius, something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. Inconceivable! Gumshoe was right for a change! His date, December 3rd, that is marked on his calendar. That was his deadline for repaying his debts. Okay. Updated in the court record. I guess we won't be needing these horse racing tickets anymore. 
Then Elg's losing horse racing tickets thrown back on the floor. Use a trash can, Nick. Right, so we got her. So what's the update exactly, though? Now that we've thinned down our inventory a little bit, potentially worth millions of dollars is the update. And we've gained that information. This is useful testimony. However, we still have some more Cyclops to break around the place and people to question. Is it over to Tenderlender next? Find out next time on Phoenix Wright. Trials and Tribulations. Bye-bye.